Welcome to the fourth episode of my Modular Diagonale Mock Project series. Full playlist up there and in the description. Today, I'll show you the work I've done in the last 12 hours I've dedicated to the project, mostly designing the first floor of the building. I'll explain the two-phased approach I followed and throw in two great tips about Bricklink Studio. Let's go! If you saw the past episodes, this model is already very well known by you. Just wanted to show you that I did some small adjustments after the things I learned playing around with the physical bricks in the last episode. So I lowered a single layer of plates all around the walls, except on this area. So you see that the tiles are now black because that's the, the color that I had on that specific layer of plates. And I increased one layer of plates to the height of the cabinets and I added some slopes to just do a, a more neat finishing. Now I want to show you two very cool things that you can do in studio. One is that you're already seeing that when I over the cursor on top of this construction here, instead of seeing the individual parts, I see a full block. This is because Studio allows me to create sub-models. So I have transformed the whole ground floor of Ollivanders and Scribulus into one single sub-model. This is very useful because it will allow me to work on the two floors in separate without risking ruining anything in one of them. So if I want to work on a specific model, what do I do? It's simple, I just double click and I'm back into the view of this submodel. And if you noticed, the other parts were all like ghosted. So if I click here, nothing happens. So I'm only working on this submodel. If I want to stop working on this submodel, I just click here where it says return to main model. And I'm back on the view where I see both. So I created a submodel for the first floor so I don't mess up with the ground floor. And this is where there's another thing that is very useful because you see it's hard to work in this submodel because of the center. This is all aligned with the ground floor submodel. So Studio has another neat function, which is to set the origin of the cursor. To do that, you select with your mouse the place where you want to put the origin, do a right click, you open a menu, and you click set as origin. And now it's centered around here and it's much easier to work on this part. So in this first phase where I worked on the first floor of the Ollivanders and Scribulus, what I did was, well, first I started to change the base, adapting to the things that I have seen in the physical bricks. So you see, I have like two layers of plates everywhere except on this line here and I changed a bit the colors so they match with the colors on the original building and then I went on to the instruction book and started implementing the steps that I knew that I would probably keep on my design so basically the front facade and even some furniture that I decided it was good I didn't want it to change it and I implemented all that here in studio. As I completely changed the disposition of the ground in Ollivanders, the original set had a full ground and only the front half, and now that is open. I built the furniture that I want to use, but I left it here on the side. For instance, using the submodel feature is very useful also for the furniture. Because, for instance, you build here this small desk, but if you want to move it around for inside the building, it's, it's very hard. But if you use a submodel, it's very easy, and, and adding a submodel is, is super easy. So, for instance, you can select all the parts, right click, submodel, create, and you can give it a name. So, Ollivander's desk. 
So you see, now it's a submodel. And I can easily drag it around completely. If I would need to work on it, it's just double clicking and everything else gets ghosted and I can work on it. So pretty useful. I arrived at this stage and I'm now going creative and starting to complete this first floor. This is the current status of the first floor of the building. I completed the walls, added windows, and added the door for the apartment on top of Scribulus. I actually created here a small entrance area so that I can fit better the stairs. In terms of furniture, let me recenter this so you can see better. Uh, what I added was a bed and a bedside table with a cute oil lamp. I'm actually very proud of this mini build of the oil lamp. I think it turned out very, very nice. I think it's pretty much finished. This area is the only one I feel a bit empty. On the scribulous side, let me recenter this again. On the scribulous side, basically I added only the desk and the chair and the balcony protection to look to the ground floor. But I'm still missing a lot of wand cabinets around here. This looks pretty empty for now. So let's see how this fits together. is okay. Let me recenter again. You need to do this a lot when you're working with big models. Okay, it's cool. So you can see that the front facade is for now exactly equal to Lego set one. And let me see how it looks on the back. This window looks bad. It's, it, these, these windows seem to have a bit of a problem here in studio. Probably a bit of a bug of the software. If I take the window, put it back. Yeah, it's all okay. But these windows right here look a bit weird. Usually the buildings have the windows aligned and actually that's one of the problems that I, I had doing this separately. I didn't look how it was looking when I was building the first floor and it doesn't look very good. I'll need to change the windows here on the first floor. The ones on the ground floor, I can't change them because they are aligned with the cabinets. There's a cabinet here and there's the stairs here. So the windows need to be here and the door here. So I need to change the windows on the first floor to align them with the ones on the ground floor. But other than that, looks pretty good. So what's the next steps? Well, I need to change these windows. Just found out that. I need to add some wand cabinets here on the first floor. And of course, I'll need to take care of the finishings on the walls so that I can fit in the rooftop that is still missing. For now, my idea is to have two separate detachable rooftops so that I can keep the rooftops of the two stores in different heights without having to add too many layers of plates so that I don't change too much the front facade. I already know that I have to at least add one layer of plates. I think that won't be very problematic because it's on a straight wall. It's not on these round walls where this would be more hard to solve. But I'm sure that I will have to add one layer of plates at least. And of course, I need to take care of the external stairs. So basically right now, that's what is missing. 
Remember to hit that thumbs button and subscribe to the channel if you like the video and want to see where this project is going. It took 43 hours so far, but I believe I'm past the major challenges and maybe, maybe, in the next episode, I'll have finished the design of the full Ollivander's building. Let's see how it goes. Stay safe, keep building, and I hope to see you very soon.